This is not the MG4, but I drove the MG4 a few days ago and I want to report everything about it. But I was not allowed to film. Another topic. Hi, my name is Chris and I make honest reviews and tests of electric cars so you can make a better informed decision what your next EV might be. So why was I not allowed to film this MG4? Well, I contacted the press department of MG if I can have an MG4 press car so I can test it. But I'm a small YouTuber with just 25,000 subscribers. So they said you're at the end of the list and we will get to, back to you if there's a car available. But then I found out that very close nearby a car dealer uh, will have an MG4 to, for test drives for customers. So I asked them if I can drive the car and they told me no this car belongs to MG, they have to say that you're allowed to drive, uh, to film it. So I contacted MG, hey, there's a dealer nearby and has an MG4, can I uh, film this car? And they said, we will get back to you, we have to think about it. And they got back to me and I said, no. <laughs> and so I contacted the dealer, can I at least drive the car as a normal test drive? And I said, yes, but MG told us, you're not allowed to film, you're not allowed to take pictures and somebody will be with you for the the whole drive but I still have lots to talk about about the MG4 how it was uh, and that I'm not just pointing into nothing I have my ID3 here so uh, you can see at least the car but I will put in some pictures of the press department let's start with the looks I think it looks really good like a good hatchback um, a great design it has 17 inch tires it was a luxury edition um, I think the standard version has 16 inch tires the charge port was the same as here in the ID3. For CCS, you have here this uh, plug, but Type 2 is free. The trunk was a reasonable size, maybe not as big as in the ID3, not as deep and not as wide, uh, but you still have a little layer in there that you can change the height, and underneath you have the charge cable, and you also have your tire repair kit. The space in the rear seats was also good. I can put my feet under the front seat, even if the front seat was on the lowest position. Maybe not as much space as here in the ID3, but it was still okay. You still uh, also have the, the lot of pockets on the, the back of the front seats. And uh, a leg room was also okay again. I'm always saying this, but also not as much as in the ID3, but enough. And the seats were very comfortable. In the front was also enough space. A steering wheel, uh, you can adjust up and down, in and out, all fine. It's not totally round. It's, it's a tiny bit square, but totally fine. No problem at all. Um, the seat was very comfortable. It had electric seats. You can adjust it very well. And there was enough space. I did not feel cramped. Not a lot of buttons. Very similar to the ID3. Future Chris here, while editing, I noticed that I forgot two things. Uh, number one, which was interesting, when you get into the car, sit down, ignition is on. And when music, radio is playing and the climate is on and you stop the car and get out of the car, so out of the seat, climate and radio stays on. Even if you close the door, a uh, salesman told me that it takes a few minutes and then it turns off automatically or you lock and then it turns off. Let's talk about the two screens. Instrument cluster, awesome. As big as the ID, as wide as the ID3, but it's square, so it's it's way taller, and you have way more information in there. Of course, speed, range, uh, state of charge, and temperature and time. The on the left there was more stuff. You can see the what the power of the of the motor that it's using in percent, though, not in kilowatt. And on the right, with your steering wheel buttons, you could adjust what you see there. You can see music. You you can see 
uh, um, your trips. You had three trips, the same as here in the ID3. So from start, since charging and long term. The infotainment screen is smaller. It's as wide, I would say, but, but a bit more narrow. So the same as in the MT5. You had a nice home screen with everything. Underneath was uh, a, a few buttons, climate and music uh, volume and everything. A few, the same as here, a few buttons there. Reaction time of the infotainment system was okay, not amazing. A few times we had to press buttons and nothing happened. We had to do it again and again. Uh, um, but then eventually it hap it worked. The sound system I checked for a minute and I'm a bit weird when it comes to sound. I don't like amazing bass, especially when it comes from a subwoofer. For me that sounds unnatural. I like it very natural, very flat. And so that's why I like it in the ID3, the sound. It's not, it's, it's nice. Of course, everyone has a different taste and it, all ha it also has to do what music you're listening to. And in the MG4, it's very similar than in here, sounding good. The seat eater had three settings, uh, was warm very fast and uh, felt very nice. Steering wheel heater only has on and off, but also felt uh, nice and warm very fast. Now to something weird. Um, when we went into the car, the climate was set to 29 degrees and we thought, ooh, somebody likes it warm. And then, so we put it down to 25 degrees, which is still hot. And we drove and after a few minutes, we noticed it's cold in the car. And we checked, there was no warm air coming out of the air vents. And so we put it back to 29 and then warm air came out. So I'm guessing that the sensor for the inside temperature doesn't work correctly. But now let's get to the important part. How does the MG4 drive? And I'm being honest and fast, it drives good. I really liked it. Steering felt nice, precise. Um, stable, it wasn't too direct where I thought this is weird, it should, uh, should be different. No, felt really good. The brake feel was amazing, way better than in here in the ID3. Uh, my ID3 has a horrible brake feel, I don't like it at all. Suspension also felt good, it was comfortable. It, it, uh, I, what I felt is that when you, when you go over a bump, the front feels a bit different than the rear. But other than that, and it was a bit more thump to it in the rear, but felt totally fine. The noise level was also good. We drove 130. It was a bit louder than in here, but fine. Uh, we even drove top speed, 166 or so. Also uh, okay, top notch. Of course, I cannot talk about consumption. We didn't drive. WLTP, we didn't do a range test or anything. Um, and we drove mostly city, a uh, bit of highway, like I said, top speed. And then we drove mostly uh, a bit on the country road. So I cannot say uh, how the consumption was. At the end, it was 195 watt hours per kilometer. But again, wasn't a test, uh, I, I can't say. The region, even in the strongest setting, was weaker than in the ID3. I was surprised by that uh, because ID3 doesn't have very strong region. So one pedal drive, forget about it. I drove the other models, MG5, Marvel R and the ZS EV. And what's different in the MG4 is that, well, I, I don't know for sure, but that's what the, the salesman told me and I couldn't see a button is that in the other cars you can change your drive mode so eco uh, normal and sport and your uh, regen level from zero to three on a button in the mg4 you have to go in the infotainment system under vehicle but now the two things that i thought weren't that amazing number one is the power it has the same 150 kilowatt 204 rear wheel drive uh, motor as the ID3 here, but it felt less powerful. It didn't have the punch even in sport mode. But the worst thing was from a standstill. If you floor it when you're standing, there's almost no power. You accelerate very slowly. It was very underwhelming. Didn't feel nice. 
here I am again. You're missing the second part that's not so amazing. Lane assist. Yes, lane assist in this car. Even the salesman told me that everyone who drives the car afterwards is saying, what's with the lane assist? It's acting a bit uh, strongly and weird. And it's true. Lane assist overall, it's a safety measure when you go off your lane that you're in. It will uh, pull you back. That's all safe and it, it's all okay. Sometimes when you drive on a narrow road you might be too close to a line and then it pulls you back even though you're not even there but in the mg4 i noticed that it did that very aggressively when you just get close to it not even it, it was still fine i was really in the middle of the road and it did that and twice uh, the guy beside me noticed that too i had the blinker on changed the lane and it steered against me and that was weird. But overall, a really nice car for that price. Good job, MG. Um, I'm looking forward to getting a press car so I can really make some consumption tests and some charging tests. And if you're a German viewer, you can find my German channel, Battery Life DE, here. Please subscribe, but please don't unsubscribe from here. It's a bad idea. But that's it for me. Thank you much for watching. Have a great day and take care. Bye.